All right, if you're thinking about moving to the Austin, Texas area, chances are you're giving some thought to what it's like to move around the area, you know, what's the drive like to certain suburbs, certain parts of towns and things like that. Guys, you have found the right video. Today, I am going to take you on a drive from just south of downtown Austin out to Lockhart, one of the suburbs on the southeast side of, of town, south of the airport. A really great location in Lockhart and a community that's growing pretty fast. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to just turn the camera around I'm going to drive. I'm going to talk to you about the things that we're passing, where things are located, um, distances between Lockhart and certain things like the airport downtown. Just going to give you a riding tour like you were sitting right here in the Jeep with me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, like I mentioned, I am just south of downtown. Um, I-35 is right over here to our left, and I'm going to be getting onto 71 right here in front of me. Um, this is an access road pulled over just so I could get the video started. Um, again, I-35 South is about 300 yards behind me. That goes up into downtown Austin. It's about three miles up. Um, and this access road is just going to get me up onto, uh, up onto 71 here. Um, now what I'm going to do, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit of a back road. I'm going to take Montopolis and, and get around. It's just a little bit easier. Um, to go but at any rate um, this part of Austin on this east side of 35 here at 71 um, a lot of a lot of warehouse area you know storage um, just it's kind of a warehouse area in general um, right behind me is Pint House Brewing, um, which is used to be Pint House Pizza. Pint House Pizza is still there. They still do their own beer. Electric Jellyfish is one of their beers. They do really good pizza at their main place, and they bought what used to be an old dance hall called Dance Across Texas, um, a really large place, and they turned that into their brewing operation. They've got a little bit different food set up in there, but uh, Pint House Brewing, Pint House Pizza, very good. Um, also over here to my right, um, you've got uh, meanwhile brewing which is a really nice outdoor area and they have three great food trucks and they've got an ice cream truck there too but one of the one of the food trucks there that I really like is distant relatives it is a um, it's a barbecue food truck and they do stuff a little southern style a little African um, African American style with uh, you know you, you can get stuff like uh, greens you know cooked greens um, that guy almost just rear-ended me. That would have been great on video. Um, anyway, you can get cooked greens there. The barbecue is just a little bit different. Um, absolutely amazing food. Uh, I believe I heard it was James Beard nominated, um, and I, I don't think they won, but the head chef there um, was James Beard nominated for that food. So a couple of really good food options here and, and brewery options as well. Meanwhile, brewing does really nice, uh, nice beers. So... You also have quite a few car shops and, and car dealerships here along the way, but this is a little bit of a jog back um, on, a, on a back road that's just a little bit easier to get out to 183, which is what we're going to take down to, uh, to Lockhart. Um, from this location, like I said, uh, downtown's about five miles away, you know, depending on traffic, anywhere from seven to 15 minutes um, in here but it just made sense to start there compared to where you know where i was on the road i was i was basically coming from dripping springs stop sign here is going to give me a little bit of grief <laughs> um you'll see you know continue to see over here on the right again more warehouse space if you're if you're needing warehouse space for a business um, you know, storage, something like that. This is a good area for it. There's not a ton of housing down here on the south side of 71. Um, again, it, it was more of an industrial area and still is. Uh, most of the housing is out further on 71 or a little bit further south uh, on 183, which we'll talk about when we get there. All right, gonna be taking a left on Burleson Road here. Um, Burleson Road is going to take us out just south of the Austin Airport. So if you stay on 71, that'll take you out to Bastrop first, and then Smithville, and then um, LaGrange, and then Columbus. And in Columbus, it'll hit I-10, and that'll take you all the way out to Houston. Houston, downtown Houston is about two and a half, or sorry, three and a half hours from here. 
um, but 71 is the way that you would take to go to Houston. Um, Burleson Road, this road's getting busier and busier, so you'll see we've got a lot of traffic passing us here. Um, a lot of people are using this as a bypass now that um, 183 has gotten busier out by the airport, um, but 71 runs on the north side of the airport. Burleson Road is going to continue on past the south side of the airport, and that's one of the awesome things about Lockhart. I mentioned it was a great location. Uh, one of the awesome things about Lockhart is it's so close to the airport. And now we'll find, finally start going. Um, it is a straight shot up, so if you if you have to commute for work, um, you know, elsewhere in the world or, or the U.S., um, it's a straight shot up 183 to the airport. Really easy to get to. Um, you don't have to fight traffic very much, except you know, kind of in the morning if you're going in um, rush hour. 183 tends to back up a little bit, but it's only closer, you know, to downtown. Um, and 183 also continues around the east side of Austin and then crosses over to the northwest side and out into the Texas Hill Country. Um, continuing east on Burleson here, um, just in turn, I, I mentioned that there's some subdivisions a little bit further south of here. The first major one that you would hit um, is Easton Park. Easton Park is a really kind of a I mean, honestly, nobody thought that the prices were going to do what they've done in Easton Park. They started out um, in the 200,000s, kind of 250 and 260, and it is a kind of a master class in how to build a master plan community in Austin. Um, they're going to have commercial in there and stuff like that, but there's a lot of hike and bike trails back in Easton. Um, nice little community parks and, and things like that. And it's so close to downtown and to the airport that the prices just took off. And, and I mean, they've had sales prices in there over a million dollars. Um, they've dialed back a little bit and there's not a whole lot of million dollar houses in Easton, um, but they are there and, and really just kind of an incredible neighborhood. Um, and it's gotten really big. It's gonna continue to grow. I think at the, at the end of it, it's gonna be somewhere close to 5,000 homes. So that's going to be a massive, massive neighborhood. Um, you also have Good Night a little bit further south, um, down there closer to Buda. It's on the very south edge of Austin. So those are kind of some of the master plan communities in that area. Um, as we are heading up here, this next slide, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. One of the great things about Austin is how many... Uh, how many opportunities you have to get outside and do things outdoors with the river and, and um, you know, the lakes city parks and neighborhood parks and stuff like that well there's also mckinney falls state park which is right here on the southeast side of austin um, and we're going to pass kind of close to it um, mckinney falls in that area there's a couple of old dormant volcanoes out here uh, really cool the ge uh, geology of central texas if you've heard me talk on other videos I-35 is an ancient fault line, and that's what's formed the hill country out west of Austin and kind of in central Austin out. Um, that's basically an upheaval that's similar to what formed the Rocky Mountains and stuff, just not as big. Uh, so it's an ancient fault line. You had upheaval over there, but that fault line was driven by uh, some ancient volcanoes in this area. And there's a, um, there's a big water tower on top of Pilot Knob, which is the ancient volcano. Um, this road right here to the right, that's McKinney Falls Road or McKinney Falls Parkway. If you take a right there, that's what takes you to McKinney Falls uh, State Park. Um, there is a creek that runs through it, Onion Creek runs through it. If you're familiar with Dripping Springs, um, that's the same Onion Creek, comes all the way around the south side of Austin and then comes through McKinney Falls State Park. Uh, really, really nice, a lot of outdoor trails and you can swim and things like that down in the park. Um, but anyway, Pilot Knob, you, we might be able to see it as we're driving here in a little bit on the camera, but yeah, really interesting geology out in this area. Um, if you've noticed, this road is really rough compared to some of the other roads in Austin. Um, in East Austin and out east of Austin, the soil changes quite a bit. You're, you've got a lot more sand and clay out here, and historically it's been farming area, but it's a lot more unstable and it, it swells and contracts a lot more than a rock does on the west side of town. Um, so, you know, the roads tend to get bumps and get hills and get holes and stuff like that. So the, the roads out here are just a little bit rougher than, you know, like your main lanes 35 and stuff like that. All right. So 
Man, even got a school bus honking. That's a, that's interesting things happening today. So Burleson Road goes straight ahead. And again, to the left, those big trees and that big fence, that is Austin Birch from International Airport. Um, and we're turning south on 183 now to head towards Lockhart. Um, again, Bertram International, it is an international airport. It has a ton of flights. They're building another new terminal now. It's becoming a very, very large airport uh, very quickly. If you are curious about how to get downtown from the airport, um, I've got another video on my channel that talks about uh, the airport and, and you know the time and how to get around in the airport and stuff like that. So. All right, we're crossing over Onion Creek again. That's what runs through McKinney Falls State Park. And there is a small waterfall there. I think it's probably four or five foot tall. That's why it's called McKinney Falls. Um, there also, that was where uh, there was a um, ancient, or not ancient, but an old wagon trail. And you can still see the wagon ruts that are in the rock, which still kind of blows my mind. If you've ever been to Rome, you can see the wagon ruts in old Rome and the cobblestone um, on the roads. And you, you can see the trails here. It just it's a little bit mind-boggling to me how there was that much wagon traffic that would actually wear out rocks. Um, I don't know, just something that always stuck out to me. Um, so we're cruising south now, again, heading on 183. The, the towns out here are gonna be Lockhart first, and then you'll get to Luling. And, and if you continue on 183 in Luling, you'll end up in Gonzales and then Cuero, and it just heads, um, trying to think where it ends up down at the coast but it ends up on the texas coast somewhere sorry it's slipping my mind right now um the road here cross street is fma 12 which goes out south of bastrop um back to the right is where that ancient volcano was that i was telling you about pilot knob uh, we won't be able to see if the, the trees are too big here um anyway these communities south on 183 are getting a lot bigger because these are the more affordable areas for people to live you know in Austin right now you can find houses in the four hundred five hundred thousand dollar range um, but you know you're gonna be limited to what you're getting you know they might be older houses that need renovation or they might be brand new um, and they're just really small and look on little postage stamp lots and, and maybe that's not what what somebody wants um, or maybe even four or five hundred thousand is gonna be too expensive so um, Lockhart for example the reason I'm heading there today is I'm gonna uh, list a house for a client um, and it's a neat little house 1200 square foot it's got a really nice yard and, and um, easy to get to and easy to get to Austin and we're probably going to be listing just over 200,000 on it. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that you can get a lot more for your money down here. And people are willing to take that 15 to 20 minute drive, you know, and, and be a little further out from Austin, um, you know, to save that money and not have to spend as much uh, on their housing. So this road right here is William Cannon. Um, that goes into Easton Park, the neighborhood that I was telling you about. Um, William Cannon used to dead end about a mile to the right and when Easton Park bought the land they bought it all the way from McKinney Falls Parkway out here to 183 they developed the whole thing the city put in um, William Cannon so you can actually turn there go all the way to I-35 you can take William Cannon all the way other side all the way across the other side of Austin um, to 290 which goes out to Dripping Springs. So you can get all the way east-west in Austin on William Cannon now, uh, thanks to Easton Park. So you can tell as we're driving, the scenery has suddenly drastically changed. You have fields, um, you have skyline. Uh, there's not much out here. Um, you know, you, you've got some old junkyards and stuff like that. This area, had been nothing but farms. This is where they grew the corn and, and um, what all did they grow out here? Shoot, cotton. There were a lot of cotton fields out here. There's still a cotton gin in Lockhart. Um, but any crops that needed to be growing were, were grown east and southeast of Austin. Um, so this is the remnants of that. You know, you got a lot of fields grown up with Wiesatch and Mesquite now just because when you don't maintain a field, the weeds take over and that's what happens. But as Austin continues to grow, this is some of the, the cheaper land that developers can buy. So expect in the future, this area to be filled in with neighborhoods going out towards Lockhart. It just so happens that right now, you know, people have decided that Lockhart is not too far of drive. 
they're more than willing to take that drive. And so it hasn't made sense financially for the developers to start building here. It's just going to be a country drive between here and Lockhart uh, for the next, uh, next 10 or 15 minutes. One thing that is starting to happen a little bit more along 183 here is we're starting to see more stoplights. Um, this next road that we're coming up to is 973. Again, takes off left, it connects to um, 812, which again is that farm to market road that goes around the south side of Bastrop. Um, and actually it goes really close to Circuit of the Americas in that area, if you're familiar with that. So we're starting to see a few more stoplights come in. You know, the roads are getting a little more busy, so they've got to make them safer. You know, with that, you're starting to see more gas stations. There's a brand new gas station on the other side of this 18 wheeler here. Um, and we're getting a pretty good rain. This is a tropical depression. It's June 20th. Uh, we typically don't get these types of rains. It rained most of yesterday afternoon, and now we're, we're getting it again a little bit. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're more and more gas stations and things like that as you come south out here to Lockhart. So you're starting to see that, that retail take over. Um, this community that we're driving through now, and it probably seems weird for me to call it a community, but this is Mustang Ridge. Um, there's not a lot out here. It used to be a farming community. It kind of went away um, when the farming and cotton industry went away. And now it's still an area and, you know, there's houses here and, and things that are happening here, but there's just not a lot here yet. Um, and again, I use that word very purposely yet because it, there's, there's going to be subdivisions and things coming in out here. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a, of a prediction um, 183, this road is going to have to grow. Um, I haven't talked to anybody at TxDOT recently, but there's so much traffic on here. They've already widened it in spots, you know, where those lights are to allow turn lanes and things like that. But this is just a four lane road and it's a major U.S. highway. It's a major artery. And with all the, um, the continued growth out here, this road has to be expanded and it's got to be made a little, a little more safe. All right, next road that we're coming up to is 1327. Uh, if you take a right here, this takes you through Creedmoor to 183 on the south side of town. You've got new um, developments popping up down here. Um, one of the problem with these developments is also off of 1327 is the city of Austin dump. And at certain times of the year when the wind is blowing right, um, you in these subdivisions, you might smell the city dump, which does not smell good. So. If you're thinking of buying a house in this area, even if you have another agent, call me and ask me. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you, uh, you might want to make sure that you're checking these places out for potential smells if the if the winds change. Um, it's a it's a real thing, and you got to be aware of it. You really, really do. All right, this next giant road that's coming up um, is it's a toll road. So 45 goes to the right. And toll 45 will take you over to um, over to I-35. And at some point, I believe 45 is supposed to continue all the way around the south side of Austin. How long that's going to take, I have no idea. Um, but that's where it is, you know, it's going eventually. Um, but the toll road also continues back to our left towards the east. We just went under that overpass. Um, that's toll 130. So 130 will take you up on just probably about, probably about two miles east of the airport. And it goes north and will take you all the way to the north side of Austin to Georgetown. So you can bypass all of Austin on a toll road right now. I personally am not a fan of toll roads just because I think they're double taxation. Won't really go into that very much, um, but if you're okay with taking toll roads, you know, there's a, a pretty quick way to get around the north side of Austin there. Now, as we're driving here, again, I'm, I'm on 183. 183 here essentially becomes an access road for the toll. So you've got two lanes south of 183. You've got three toll lanes south, three toll lanes north, and then two 183 lanes north on the other side of this wide road. So you've got a lot of highway going on here um, from here into Lockhart. And you'll see as we go all the entrance and exits and things like that for the toll. Now we are technically still in the city of Mustang Ridge or the community. Um, they have incorporated. Uh, they are, I don't know, personally, I think they're a little difficult on developers and people trying to 
you know, build communities and things like that. That's their prerogative. It's it's what they're uh, what they're deciding to do. <laughs> Here in a little bit, we'll come up by the Mustang Ridge Police Department, and they can be a pain. You got to watch it when you're driving here. The speed limit on the toll road is 80 and the speed limit here on these access roads is 65. That is the, oh that's sorry, that's concrete. Here is the Mustang Ridge Municipal Building and Police Department. Little bitty building, unassuming, um, but be aware Mustang Ridge for everything that they don't have they definitely have police and they will definitely give you a ticket if you're speeding through here and they catch you. Um, speed limit does slow down to 60 right here. I'm driving 60. Um, I've learned my lesson. I guess you'd probably figured that out with the way that I'm talking about their police department. <laughs> All right, next major road we're coming to is Highway 21. We're going over Highway 21 now. Um, if you take a right on 21 here, the first little community you're going to come to is Niederwald. Um, Niederwald is growing. And it's because Kyle and Buda are growing so much. Uh, Niederwald, I believe the majority of it is um, is Hayes Consolidated ISD. And so that's the first community you come to over there. And then you'll end up coming to San Marcos. You can get to I-35 um, in San Marcos that way. And then 21 will continue out, uh, out west over there. If you take a left on 21 there and go east, it'll take you up to, again, up to Highway 71 in Bastrop. So 21 is a, is, I wouldn't call it a major highway. It's mostly two lane, um, but it's a, a major cross. And, um, you know, it's not a far to market road. It is a highway. Another little community here called Mendoza that really doesn't have a lot going on other than a few houses and one or two little restaurants. Um, again, these these little communities like this were just farming communities. You know, there may have been a, a group of six or eight houses here that were just all farmhouses and, and you know, did crops and, and stuff like that or, or raised cattle. Um, but yeah, Mendoza is this little community. There's always been this huge satellite array there and I don't even know what it is, honestly, but that satellite array has been there since I was a kid when 183 was just one lane in, in both directions. Um, this is how I used to come into Austin from Shiner where I grew up. As we're continuing on here, there there's not a ton that I can tell you about the area between here and Lockhart. So I'm gonna discuss some of the reasons that I personally like Lockhart. I think that that's a reason that people are moving here. Um, one of the, well, one of the things that Lockhart is known for, um, I don't know if they've got a designation like the barbecue capital of Texas or something. They might at this point, uh, but there's a ton of barbecue restaurants here. Um, <clears throat> Black's Barbecue, which now there's two of them, Kent Black, and I don't know who owns the original Black's. Um, that's a lot of family drama. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to dig into family barbecue drama in Texas, um, you know, you can look online for some of that stuff, but anyway, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. I, I wish families would just get along and that money wouldn't come in between people, but it is a thing. But you have Blacks, you have Smitty's, you have Kreitz's, and Kreitz doesn't spell anywhere near what it uh, sounds like. It's K-R-E-U-Z. It kind of looks like Cruz, but it's pronounced Kreitz because it's an old German family. Um, but Kreitz's barbecue and there's uh, Chisholm Trail used to be my favorite, but I heard it changed hands and it's not as good anymore. And then there's another new one that's kind of a little barbecue trailer that I've been told is pretty good. Um, and I think the I think the owner is Tommy Schulte, um, who grew up in Yoakum, which is uh, close to where I grew up. Um, at least that's what I was told. So um, I think Tommy Schulte's got that that new place there. But <clears throat> Lockhart is known for barbecue. If you want my opinion, um, I like Schmitty's, uh, and I say Schmitty's, it's Smitty's, S-M-I-T-T-Y. Um, I like them, but for me personally, I'll drive through Lockhart another 15 minutes and go eat in Luling um, at uh, at City City Market in Luling. I think their barbecue is better. Now, I will give you the disclaimer here. Um, I judge barbecue mostly by brisket and then by, uh, by pork ribs, so these other places may have great turkey and sausage and things like that, but it doesn't really take a lot of skill to do those well. Uh, I can do that really well at home. Well, I can do anything well at home, but anyway. 
Barbecue for me is all about brisket and the ribs, so there's my disclaimer. But I'll go through Lockhart and go to City Market in Luling for my brisket and ribs. And I do have to apologize for stopping the video every once in a while. Um, I've got some kind of allergies that are making me cough quite a bit, so um, I'm turning the camera off to cough and get a little drink of water uh, before I move on. But um, anyway, so Lockhart is known for barbecue. Uh, it's, it's a really cute town. You can find brand new construction there. And you can also find construction that happened, you know, in the early 1900s and possibly even the 1800s in some of the old Victorian style houses. Um, it's got a really cool little, um, little downtown area. It's got a square around the courthouse. It is the county seat for Caldwell County which is interesting, right? Because there's a city of Caldwell um, that is further east and it's the county seat for another county and I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, that's actually embarrassing for me. But anyway, this is the county seat for Caldwell County. Um, and I'll take you on a little drive around the, the square. It's really nice. It's being renovated, like the square is being redone. People are moving businesses in. Um, you know, there's restaurants down there, you know, one of the barbecue smitties is right off the square, but they're taking the old historic buildings and, and renovating them and bringing them back to life. And it's really cool to watch. Um, you know, when I was a kid, there was not a lot going on in downtown Lockhart and really up until about 15 years ago, there wasn't a lot going on. But as Austin has grown, um, you know, these little communities that are within 15 or 20 minutes um, on the outskirts have gotten a lot of people looking to, you know, be commutable to Austin, um, but also live in something that doesn't look like Austin. You know, Austin has a certain look and yeah, you can find historic homes, but you're going to have to go to West Austin and your little 1200 square foot historic home is going to cost you $1.3 million. So for people that want that, but don't want to pay $1.3 million, they've started going to these small farming communities outside like Lockhart and as austin grows communities like this grow and then you see these big roads coming in 130 uh you know that the toll road right here uh, and i'll mention 130 continues all the way south to i-10 and seguin which is on the uh, on the east side of san antonio i-10 runs well from california to florida um and 130 goes down and, and joins i-10 right there on the east side of san antonio and seguin so they, they created that road as a bypass for um, Austin and I-35 in general. If you've ever driven from Dallas to Austin or from Austin to San Antonio on I-35, you know that you are going to have um, traffic and there's gonna be times when that road comes to an absolute stop, even if it is four lanes wide going each direction. Um, so 130 was meant to take some of the, the burden off of that. And it does, I mean, I don't know how much it helps the actual traffic in Austin now because there's so much more, um, so much more congestion and stuff as it's grown, but you know, there, it has taken some of the pressure off. It's obvious because there's, you know, people driving it all the time and you can see 18 wheelers, you know, the freight moving on it as well. Um, so we just went under 130. It passes to the west of Lockhart and we're now on the old 183 that's, that's going into Lockhart. And coincidentally, there's a couple of properties right here on the right and left that I have always loved. There's a really nice fishing tank over here to the right that's probably four or five acres. It's beautiful. And there's massive views here to the east. Um, you really can't see, but you know, it, it's always been a place that, that I thought was beautiful here coming into Lockhart. Um, but anyway, Lockhart, you can find houses of all different generations. Um, you can find restaurants, you know, there's plenty of restaurants here, Mexican restaurants. I mentioned barbecue. Um, those are going to be the, the standards, right? You've got some fast food. You got your Subway, Dairy Queen, McDonald's, uh, Taco Bell, Chicken Express, all those things. So it's big enough to have some fast food. Uh, but you're also going to have your, your mom and pop shops um, around. There's some boutiques, you know, if you're into that type of thing. So, you know, Lockhart's got a little bit for everybody. And it really is kind of the old, you know, Texas small town farming community. Uh, that's really what Lockhart is still at its core. It just happens to be growing a little bit because people are leaving Austin or, or bypassing Austin and coming here because of the cost. Um, you can still find land 
and uh, and larger properties here. Uh, you know, there's there's a few communities in here that have lots that are two and three acres, but you know, you can find old farmhouses out on 30 or 40 acres still that you know used to be the the you know where they farm and stuff. So that stuff's still available if that's what you're looking for. Um, larger pieces of property, small ranches, you can still find that around Lockhart. Um, Terry Black's barbecue is right there to the left. I think a while ago I said Ken, uh, Kent Black. Kent's in, in San Marcos. He actually has really good, um, really good brisket. Um, Terry also has a spot in downtown Austin um, on Barton Springs Road, and a lot of people like it. Um, it's it's fine for me. Um, I prefer I prefer Kent's uh, brisket in San Marcos personally. Um, as we're sitting here on on at this light, uh, FM 672, the city park is off to the left. Uh, baseball field, stuff like that. There's city cemeteries over here off to the left as well. Um, and we're going to go over an overpass that is a uh, is a railroad overpass. Um, Lockhart being the county seat was, uh, um, you know, where the large majority of, you know, the, the commerce was done back in the day. Um, here's Kreitz Barbecue off to the right. They built this big building, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago now. Kreitz used to be downtown. Um, but anyway, this is where a lot of the commerce was done, and you can see over here to the left these grain elevators that go up. So this is a, a mill and an old cotton gin, um, and that's this is where people brought their corn and their you know their wheat and and uh, cotton and all. But with the train track there, that was the ability for them to get their cotton and stuff like that to other parts of the country. So um, that gin is still in operation; it still runs. Um, it just it changed a little bit because there's not much cotton around here anymore you can see there on the left there is a uh, actually this used to be a uh, pawn shop but now it's a resale shop so there's still some of the old buildings here again that are being you know re repurposed and reconditioned and refurbished um i will uh i'll take a right i'll yeah i'll take a right here we'll go around the square because we are for all purposes we are in downtown lockhart right now this is starting of the square and again, you'll see as we drive around, this looks like town square or downtown of so many small Texas towns. You know, a lot of German influence in here um, with the construction, but you know, I, I've been around a lot more small towns in, in Texas than you probably have, but this just looks like so many of them. You know, you got the Lockhart Bistro here is under, under renovation, but you know, hair salons and, and small businesses. This guy, it's a museum of clocks and watches, um, but this looks you know with the with the paint schemes and and things like that now this looks so much different than it did even even five years ago um, let alone 15 or 20 and it gives it a certain feel and, and if this is the kind of feel that you're looking for in a you know in a in a hometown um you know lockhart's got a lot of stuff going for it like everything you have come on man like everything you have, uh, you know, it, it, it's got its downsides as well. Um, and I, I'm, since I'm already in Lockhart, I don't have a lot of time to, to go into all of that. But, um, you know, it's got downsides, so make sure you research or, or reach out to me and, and we can chat about that. But, you know, all in all, Lockhart's a pretty cool place to live and it's growing. So it, there's going to be growing opportunity here and, and, and things like that, especially for, you know, if you're thinking about starting a business, um, especially service based, obviously. When a town's growing, you're going to need construction and, and um, uh, you know, cleaning services and, and HVAC and plumbing and welding and, and all of those things. You know, small towns like this that are that are just busting and bustling are, are going to be, uh, you know, going to be pretty good places to settle. So, guys, that's it for the video. If you are, um, if you're thinking about moving to this area, like I said, it may be a good idea to subscribe to my channel. Um, and let me know if this is a, you know, is this a good type of video for you? If you want to see me drive somewhere else in Austin, um, I, I don't mind doing these. I really enjoy them. Just kind of sharing my knowledge on the area. And if you're moving to the area and you want to talk to somebody who knows a lot about the area, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you. And, and my goal here is to make your move to this area, you know, to, to the Central Texas area really smooth by giving you all the information you need to make a, a wise choice. But all right, I want you to have an amazing day and I hope to talk to you soon.